Excellent! My question for you guys today is, do you like really, really fast storage? If you do, you should like this video. Okay, that was a pretty poor attempt, but today's video is really all about M.2, also known as next generation form factor, although that's getting to be a little bit passe, and what it can do for you and your computer. And just to mix things up, I'm going to combine this M.2 tutorial with a quick review of a new drive from ADATA, that is the ADATA SP900 and the M.2 2280 version. So for new Intel platforms that launched in 2014, we're seeing a new type of form factor connection between permanent storage and your computer. Now there's M.2, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. There's also SATA Express. Those drives are really hard to come by as of the making of this video. So I'm gonna focus on M.2. We'll save SATA Express for a different video. Now if you currently have a drive connected to your computer, chances are it connects via Serial ATA. That's been a standard that's been in place for some time. And SATA is actually pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward because both the connector and the protocol for communicating between the drive and your computer are both called SATA or Serial ATA. Now, the only confusion maybe with Serial ATA is that we went from revision one to revision two to revision three. That basically gave us more bandwidth each time and we're stuck right now with SATA revision three that gives us six gigabits per second of bandwidth that's available for connected drives to use to communicate with the rest of the computer. Now to talk about M.2, we need to distinguish between two important things. There's the connector or the physical plug that connects a drive to the rest of your computer and there's the protocol which is is a standard for the digital communication between the drive and the rest of your computer. So let's start by talking a little bit about the M.2 connector itself. It has a width first off, and there's different widths that are supported, 12 millimeters, 16 millimeters, 22 millimeters, and 30 millimeters. Although right now, the most common one that I've seen is 22 millimeters. And then we also have different lengths that can be supported as well. Aside from the width, you'll also notice two notches on the edge connector. These are referred to as keys, and the M.2 spec has a list of potential notch locations that correspond to different types of devices that can be connected. E-keyed M.2 slots will fit new wireless cards, for example, but fortunately SSDs will primarily use the B and M keys, at least right now. Most of the SSDs I have seen actually come with both B and M keys available on the edge connector, which eases compatibility concerns since they'll fit both B and M keyed M.2 slots. So our ADATA SP900 here is a 2280 M.2 drive, which means it's 22 millimeters wide and 80 millimeters long. There are also different lengths determined by the M.2 spec, and the most common ones that I've seen are 30, 42, 60, 80, and 110, and depending on your motherboard or notebook, you might have support for different lengths. Installation of M.2 is actually really simple. If you've ever installed an SODIM in a notebook before, it would be very familiar. You just pop it in in much the same way, and a single screw will secure the card in place. M.2 can support devices using two different protocols, and here's where some confusion comes into play. You have the SATA protocol on one hand that we've been familiar with and using for some time. You also have the PCI Express protocol. Now, PCI Express has actually been in use for some time for storage devices, and you can get devices such as this OCZ Revo drive that connect directly to the PCI, slot, PCI Express slot on your motherboard, and that allows you to use this for really, really fast storage and get around the SATA bottleneck. The difference here is that it hasn't been natively supported yet. Native support means that we'll have better compatibility and then we'll also get to ditch that nasty boot delay that happens when an option ROM loads like it does with the OCZ Revo drive. Now an M.2 SATA drive, as opposed to PCI Express, is going to have the same available bandwidth as a standard SATA drive, that's 6 gigabits per second for Gen 3. Current implementations of M.2 PCI Express, on the other hand, are currently Gen 2 by 2. So PCI Express Gen 2 by 2 is the connection and that gives you 10 gigabits per second of bandwidth, so 40% more than SATA. And more available bandwidth means that drives that are faster are going to be able to perform faster. Now the really cool thing about M.2 PCI Express drives is that there's a lot of room for future growth. So whereas right now we have Gen 2 by 2, eventually we will see Gen 2 by 4 or Gen 3 by 4, for example, all the time giving you more bandwidth. Of course, we're gonna need fast SSDs to actually take advantage of that. So now that we've talked a bit about M.2 in general, let's move on to our review portion of the ADATA SP900 M.2 2280 drive. Now I tested this drive in an ASRock Killer Z97 motherboard, and that has support for both PCI Express as well as SATA M.2 drives. 
For the SSD, we have a Sandforce SF2281 controller. This is a solid controller and it's actually much more reliable than previous generations of Sandforce controllers, fortunately. Uh, it does require compressible data to really perform. It likes compressible data, but not quite so much for incompressible. Also, this is a special version of the SF2281. Sandforce has uh, worked some magic with it that lets you actually use 100% of the drive's capacity. So this is why it's a 256 gigabyte drive and not a 240 gigabyte drive. The NAND that 888 is using here, since this is kind of a mid-range SSD, is MLC Asynchronous, which is a little bit slower than Synchronous NAND. This also has a three-year warranty, uh, and it's got support for all the important SSD things that you would want, like trim support and dev sleep or device sleep to save power when your device is not in use. It's available as a 2242 or a 2280 form factor M.2 variety drive, and there's also 2.5 inch variants of a uh, SP900 there too. Now the performance of the SP900 is, I don't want to say disappointing here, it's just the same. It's still a serial ATA drive. It's still using the serial ATA protocol, even though it's an M.2 connected drive. So we're going to see the same peak performance here as we see on a regular serial ATA drive, and uh, this is also going to show the slightly slower than the fastest SSDs currently available performance that we would expect from a mid-range Sandforce SF2281 drive with asynchronous NAND flash memory. It's easily going to keep up with comparable SATA SSDs. I was able to hit all of the advertised numbers on the box in my benchmarks. And of course we're going to see it getting outpaced here by the Plex Store M6E, which is a PCI Express Gen 2 by 2 drive, which gives it additional bandwidth that the SP900 cannot take advantage of. So to summarize my review of the 880 SP900, I would like to point out that anyone who is jumping from a mechanical hard drive to an SSD is going to see a vast improvement in their day-to-day -day computing experience. The response time is there, and the speed is there to give you just a much more my computer is already always ready for anything I throw at it kind of feeling. Now I think there's a niche that this drive will really fit in specific, and that is folks who already have a notebook or laptop that has an M.2 SATA slot already built into it and is ready for an upgrade. That, in my opinion, is what this drive is really built for. And fortunately, there's actually quite a few notebooks out there that fit that bill. That includes the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 2, the MSI GS60 Ghost, the Razer Blade 14, the Sony Vio Duo 13, and Vio Pro 13, just to name a few. So if your notebook is ready for this drive, I think it's a great upgrade. Now for other folks who might be considering something like this, in particular for you desktop users out there, myself included, I would say that, well, if you have an M.2 PCI Express slot in your desktop, for example, well, you just you can't use this drive, period. If you have a slot that has a hybrid solution that does serial ATA as well as PCI Express like our ASRock motherboard did, I would recommend waiting and going with an M.2 PCI Express solution. Now, one drive that I would love to recommend, assuming it lives up to the hype and it actually is released to market and uh, my friends at ADATA can actually send me one. Hi, if you're watching this, friends at ADATA. And uh, that drive is the, forgive me, SR1020NP. And uh, the benefits of that drive is it's PCI Express Gen 2 by 4, and it features the newest Sandforce SF3700 series controller, which I think is going to be pretty awesome once we can get our hands on it, of course. But that is all for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment in the comment section down below and let me know what next generation storage drive you are most looking forward to, whether it be M.2, SATA Express, or some other fancy drive connection type that I have no idea even exists yet. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button too while you're down there. We'll see you all very soon.